This is Philip Rostek speaking, and it's the beginning of part three of what I call my life. We finished up part two with a little discussion of Philippe Entremont, the French pianist, and his style of playing. I would like to mention that um, a writer about music mentioned that if there were a piano in town, Mr. Entremont would play on it. It was meant as a little bit of an unkind remark. But I would like to say, as an introduction to this, um, this part of my life, that when he played the piano in the Greensburg High School Auditorium, it changed my life and enriched my life. And so Mr. Entremont needs no introduction from me. He played with Bernstein and, and Eugene Ormandy. And so uh, I guess it's okay to compare him with other great instrumentalists. But in a larger, in a larger way, I think for my purposes, it rather misses the mark. I think I say that from the standpoint of a 75-year-old man looking back on things now, but also at that time of my life, I had become aware of how fragile things were when one tried to measure creative worth. And the subjectivity that is involved in such an endeavor, it's, it doesn't get any easier. George Zortish wrote me a great letter which got me into the University of Southern uh, Florida. Um, and I would uh, get the tuition waived and there would be a $2,000 a year stipend. And that was something that was pretty important to me. I didn't really know what to do at Penn State when I had to move forward. There was an instructor that had come in to Penn State. His name was Ted Singer. And he asked me where I was thinking about going to further my education. And I said, I had heard Cornell. And he said, oh, Phil, don't go there. It's a good school, but it's not you. You'll be unhappy, You'll be unhappy there. Um, I just got back from Pittsburgh where I saw the department head at CMU. His name was Bruce Breland. I just saw his show that was hanging in the art, art uh, building there, and you would get along great with him. And so I applied with CMU, and it, what happened was I came there with my portfolio. There were several people in a room. I unzipped my leather case and started leafing through my drawings, and uh, it was met by um, people that were pressed into service to actually be there and perform a function that were, had become for them humdrum. And so I didn't see much enthusiasm, so I zipped my portfolio back up, thanked them for their time, and uh, walked out of the office towards the elevator. And then a person came out and said, you're Phil Rostek. You, you were selected to be in the national drawing competition from Penn State. I said, yes, that's right. He said, well, why didn't you say so? I said, well, I showed you the drawings. Couldn't you tell? And that got me into CMU with the best money reduction in tuition. And that, that little exchange between Richard Beeman, Professor Richard Beeman and me would would tend to be a little thing, but it was a big thing. It was a big thing for me. And so that was a factor in in 
my decision to go to CMU, but it wasn't the only reason. My brother had gone there when I was a kid, and I had visited the art building there. Um, it was designed by Hornbossel. It was uh, an amazing building. I saw um, the first floor had um, marble floors. There were floor plans for, from temples and great cathedrals and uh, niches with Greek statues and um, everything was very lofty and when I was there with my brother and dad I was in the basement and I saw drama students wearing uh, paint pants and boys and girls working together stapling canvas to wood and painting stuff for a set design having a good time laughing and talking while they were doing it and I thought someday I'd like to I like to do that myself and that was one of the reasons why I actually did go to Carnegie Mellon and when I arrived and found my studio I saw a painting leaning up against the wall it was in a basement there were big machines whirring there and um, ventilating machines, I guess, for the rest of the building. It was in Margaret Morrison building. And so you went in through a door, you went into a kind of um, uh, an area that had large furnace-like um, building uh, uh, machines whirring, and then another door opened up into some studio space that looked rather bookish with individual rooms um, that were were blocked off so that you did have a kind of private space. Nothing was locked. Uh, that was fine. The lighting was fluorescent lights. We were in the basement. But in that room with the whirring machines, I saw a painting leaning up against the wall of um, a house that had a porch light on, uh, and the evening was... Um, illuminated by that light that looked very inviting and friendly and realistic. It was not long after that that I met the guy that painted that picture, Jim Nelson. Jim was a wonderful painter and he had studied at Carnegie Mellon as an undergraduate and then enrolled in the graduate program he had made some progress with Elaine de Kooning in his work, and um, uh, and he decided to continue his work at CMU. And um, coming in from the outside, I asked Jim who he thought were good instructors. And I thought, well, if he painted well, he might turn me on to um, people that... Um, would turn out to be wise selections uh, for me. And he said, well, there's a grapevine of people, not a lot, but a grapevine of people who like Robert Lepper and they think that he's very smart. And so Mr. Lepper became part of my graduate committee. The other member was Bruce Breland. And then there was a third uh, individual that was come that had come in from England as a kind of visiting guy there. Uh, the two major people were Breland and Lepper. Mr. Lepper taught both in the design department and in the art department. He was a teacher of Robert of of Andy Warhol, and um, he also um, it could be said without. Um, uh, a stretch that he designed the first course in industrial design in the country at least he was there at that time and uh, if he wasn't the founder of it he worked with individuals and as a group they did it was important stuff and Leper was very bright I sat in on his course and then took his individual and um, uh, 
individual and social analysis analysis court work, uh, coursework that um, had distinguished him over the years and I found it to be um, a big deal for me. Um, individual expression turned out to be something that the um, the students called the retrospective which meant you looked into your past and you try to discover who you really are and the social part of it was to look at the Oakland area, the Oakland project, where you tried to look at it without prejudice and uh, and describe it in ways that uh, were informational um, based on the subtraction of prejudice and uh, observation instead of preconception. Um, and Leper was well known for that. Soon I would meet another um, personality who became a lifelong friend, Shalom Newman, um, who, who became a very good friend, just like Jim Nelson uh, is a good friend. Both of them are good friends to this day. And when I asked him that question, he said, oh, uh, Leper is great. Study with him and also... Bruce Breland is very good. And so I approached Bruce Breland. He accepted me as his student. And I learned tremendous amount of information from Bruce, who was a great storyteller. He had experience in New York uh, as a painter himself. He was personal friends with Roy Lichtenstein. He came from Southern Illinois uh, University. And, and at that time... That was a seedbed for forward thinking. Um, uh, Buckminster Fuller, Marshall McLuhan, and so forth. He knew all about uh, Black Mountain College and and had uh, experience that he imparted to me um, over dinner, over lunch, almost on a daily basis. We became friends. Bruce Breland was a person who, who had the unique, unique ability to be a friend and a mentor at the same time. He was interested always in what was going on in the world, and he was a um, clairvoyant kind of uh, personality about, um, about such things, and he imparted that love of inquiry into me. And this was very similar also to what Robert Lepper did. Inquiry was a big word for both of them. And that might be um, a good place to pause, pause on the word inquiry uh, before we move forward. <laughs> 